Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Fishing for Real. Got this bright shirt, it's probably really reflective against my light back there, but uh, anyway, welcome back to another episode. Today, I'm just going to show you guys um, how to rig up a drift rig um, for salmon fishing. Now, where I'm at in Washington, I live in Washington. Uh, right now, salmon are coming up in the rivers, and i uh, been fishing quite a bit lately. Um, haven't really done any good so far. My brother hooked one yesterday and lost it. Today, this morning, my grandpa had one on and lost it. So, you know, you got to use barbless hooks. You lose a lot of fish. And I'm um, go, actually going out a little bit, so hopefully I can actually get footage for you guys, catch a couple fish maybe. But uh, I'm just going to show you how I rig up uh, for fishing. And I use other a lot of different techniques, but um, here's just one that works um, pretty well. And so um, I'm going to start out with this rig uh, for drift fishing with, you know, a rod, of course. You always got to have your rod. So uh, right here I've got a 9.5 foot um, Lambie glass. Um, and this one actually, this particular model is made for side drifting, which is basically like drift fishing, just without a, with, um, you know, out of a boat. So I'm going to be on the bank, but, um, you know, there's not really a whole, whole lot of difference in there. You're still doing the same technique. Uh, so this rod works fine. I have um, on there's my line. I've got I don't know if you can see that 15 pound braid. Now, a lot of guys use 30 or 50 pound braid when they use braided line, um, but I like to go with 15 just because it's small diameter and it casts a lot better. You know, it casts a lot better than that 15 or 30 pound. Uh, you can even get 20 pound, but you know I like to drop all the way down to 15, and it's still strong. Still not going to break on you. Uh, it's still good stuff. So the reason I do run braid, because um, you know you're just drift fishing, uh, you can run you know mono or even fluorocarbon. But uh, I'll run braid just in case I want to switch up and throw like something like a bobber, um, you know, a different rig like that, which I've showed you guys uh, bobber rigs before, um, and a couple, I don't know, like last year around this time, or probably last winter maybe, I don't know. But uh, the braid line is for that technique, but I you know use it for drifting, so. Off my braided line, let's get on with the rig. I got a little, um, I don't know if you can see, a little snap on there. And this is actually a pretty small one. But, uh, so I have a snap on there. Some guys will use a swivel. Um, I like to use a snap just because I can switch out a lot of different stuff. Also throw spinners and, you know, other lures on there, some jigs. Um, so you got that snap on coming off your rod. Then you're going to want to grab a, you know, a tied up leader, and I already, you know, pre-tied these, um, and these actually have an egg loop, let's see if you can see, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to stand up and get close to the camera for you, but they actually open up, pull it out, so you got a little loop, and that is for, you know, your bait, you put eggs in there, put shrimp in there, some yarn, whatever you, you know, are fishing with, pull it down, and it, you know, keeps your, keeps your bait on there. Is what that's for. And so I pre-tied these readers in a different video. Maybe I'll show you how to do the egg loop if this video gets a lot of likes or if, you know, if you guys want to see that, if you guys want to see how to tie that knot, comment down below and I'll do it. So this leader kind of varies in length, you know, depending on how close the fish are to the bottom or what's going on. You know, run it from anywhere from three, three and a half feet all the way up to, you know, five or six feet. Um, I like to usually keep them sh a little bit shorter um, just because you don't want to floss any fish, and uh, that's basically snagging fish in my in my book. And uh, for one, it's illegal to snag, and for two, I just I don't like people that snag. I just it's it's unfair. You're not actually you know for me to you know it's I'm one of those guys where you have to catch you have to have the fish eat it. If the fish doesn't take it in its mouth, then then it shouldn't count. You know, I, I'm a strong believer of no snagging. And so what flossing is, is basically snagging uh, fish in the mouth. So what happens is you got a bunch of line out like this, the fish are in the river going like this to their mouth, and your line floats down, goes right into their mouth, and you feel that, and you set the hook, so the line's in their mouth, and when you set the hook, it pulls the hook into the corner of their mouth. So when you reel it in, and you know, the game warden is sitting there or whatever, you know, you can be like, oh yeah, it's in the mouth, and you know, he looks at it, or it's in the mouth, it's, you know, it counts. But, you know, technically you did snag that fish, because that, he hit the line, you know, got the line all tangled in his mouth. So it wasn't actually, you know, 
he didn't actually come up and eat the actual bait. So, uh, you know, I don't like doing that. So I try to keep a shorter leader so that doesn't happen with a long leader. You know, you got a lot more line, a lot more chance of doing that. Um, you know, and a Chinook, like right now I'd be fishing for more Chinook. Coho haven't came in yet. So, you know, shorter leaders. Uh, then on this leader, because the Chinook hugged the bottom, the bottom, you run a Corky. Now this is just a little green. Uh, the fish in the river that I've been fishing in, are, they do not want to bite. You know, you can climb up. Um, one side, you know, flat bank. One side, if you cross the river, it's up and high off. You know, big, big drop off. You can climb up there and uh, look down and see all these fish. And you can throw whatever you want. And they, they don't like to hit. Um, you know, you really got to get in front of them and cast repeatedly over and over in front of that fish. You know, just to make them mad. Because they, when they're in the rivers, they're not eating. You just got to, you know, make them mad. And, uh, you know, it's kind of more territorial. They want to get it out of the territory. It's, you know, it's making them mad. You know, if, if a fly or a bee comes up and starts buzzing around in your face, you know, you want to you know, get away from it or swat it, you know. So that's kind of how they do with your baits, waving around in front of their face and it just annoys them. So you slide that corky on, just like that. And that's just to keep your bait off the bottom so you're not um, snagging on the bottom. And so then, uh, this is where if you have that swivel, up here or I have a snap if you have a swivel you just tie that end of line to the swivel for me I like to make a loop so this leader is pretty long so I'm going to shorten it up because again I don't want to I don't want to floss those fish or snag them I'm just going to do a little you know old-fashioned loop right there bang and that that's pretty strong um, and this this line um, for my leaders so I'm using 15 pound braid and this is also actually 15 pound fluorocarbon leader I like to use fluorocarbon because um, it's, I don't know where my knife is, I gotta cut this, but I like to use fluorocarbon because it, um, it's invisible. So, you know, right now the water is really clear, you can see the fish, the fish can see, and uh, you don't want them to, you know, see that line get spooked off or whatnot. So, I just like to use fluorocarbon. And yeah, it does sink, so say I was running fluorocarbon without the corky, it would sink down and get snagged up a lot more. But that corky helps that fluorocarbon, you know, kind of makes that fluorocarbon float. So what I did, just tied a loop. And you want to, and when you tie that, you want to have a good tag in. I don't know if you can see, there's a nice tag in sticking off there. And you want to leave that on there. Or if you tie it to your swivel, you know, you leave that, you leave that tag end on there. So then I'm going to hook that loop onto my snap. Or if you tied it onto a swivel, it's already on. So then what you do is you got that tag end on there like I was talking about, you take a piece of this um, hollow core pencil lead, and there's different ways, you can use all kinds of stuff, there's different ways to do this, but I like to use this stuff, it's hollow core pencil lead, so it's just basically lead that comes in a big roll and you can bend it and do all kinds of stuff with it, and it's hollow, it's got a hole that goes down the middle of it. So right now the rib is low, clear, you don't need much, so uh, you know, you just take some of this, you find out how much you need, and you just bend it a couple times bust it off and you got a hole going through it and so now what you do is with this pencil lead that has the hole take your tag in I really hope you guys can see and you put that hole you put the tag end in that hole that way then you grab your pliers and you're gonna pinch I really hope you can see this like I said you pinch down and you pinch that weight onto your tag end Okay, so now if I let go, now where my tag in used to be, my weight is on there. And you pinch that down really good so it doesn't fly off when you're casting. And uh, what that allows to happen is, a lot of times, like I said, your corky keeps your bait up off the bottom. And its weight's going to be down there. You want this weight just to go tick, 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 just bounce, you know, bounce along the bottom. You don't want it to drag, you just want it to go tick, tick, tick. You know, every, every couple feet you want it to, you know, just bounce on the bottom just to, just so you know your bait is down there. And uh, it's a nice natural, you know, drift presentation. Looks like, you know, something drifting down the river. So, um, the reason I do that with the weight is so when that weight's down there drifting and it gets snagged up, I'm not going to do it just because I'm going to actually use this rig when I go out in a little bit. But you get that weight snagged up, all you have to do is pop it real quick and that weight slides right off. It's just pinched onto your tag end 
it slides right off. You go in, you still got your cool key and hook on there, and you just slide on another piece of pencil lead. And a pencil lead, I'm pretty sure it's not too it's not too expensive. You get a big roll of it. Just make sure you get the hollow the hollow core, and uh, there's different sizes, different thickness of it. I can't remember what this is, but you know, right now the rivers are you know, at least where I'm at, they're still you know shallow and not running very fast. So you want to get them you know thinner stuff in the winter for like steelhead or. You know, if we have a lot of rain, the river moves fast, um, you know, it can get some thicker and use more um, lead. So anyway, that's kind of how you do it. And uh, underneath this corky, if you want, you know, sometimes you can run just a straight corky and they will hammer the corky. I'm not sure why. Um, but, you know, same if you use like a, you can use a bead as well. Instead of a corky, put a bead on there and peg it about, up, you know, about two finger, you know, or about two inches away from your hook. Uh, peg a bead. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Just a bead. It looks like you know, little salmon egg floating down the river. Um, you can run a corky and just run a corky. Sometimes they just hit the corky. Um, just you know, I don't know what they think it is, but they just hit them. And uh, you know, you could run some bait or some yarn through that egg loop, some eggs, some shrimp, something like that, and just throw it, throw it out there upstream and just let it drift. And again, you want just a tick. Tick, 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 and uh, those fish will, they're, they're bited all different ways. I've had salmon come up and just barely take it, and you, you know, all it does is stop drifting. You can just feel them kind of chewing on it. You set the hook, and sometimes you're drifting, all of a sudden your rod just goes boom, boom. <laughs> the other day I was using, I actually was using one of my bass rods the other day, uh, just because, so get my pliers, using my bass rod the other day out there, just because I was, uh, I don't know, I didn't, this rod was all tangled up or something, and uh, so it was my Dobbins, what was it, my, my 703, and I use it for like jigs and stuff sometimes, right, and so I was drifting along, and it felt like, I, I've never caught a 10 pounder before, but uh, it felt like what I would imagine a 10 pound bass crushing a jig, I mean I was drifting, and all of a sudden the rod just goes boom, boom, and just, I just like thumped it. And uh, I missed the fish, set the hook, he was kind of, I felt him for a second and he was gone. But uh, sometimes they just hammer it out of aggression, sometimes they just come up and pick it up and carry it, you know, out of their territory. Uh, just depends, but, uh, you know, if you're, if you're somewhere, you know, Washington, somewhere with a salmon, uh, you know, I know, like, the great, you know, salmon run and the Great Lakes and stuff. And so, you know, up, you know if you're anywhere around where you know there's rivers with salmon, go, go down there, you know, make sure you know your regulations. But... Go down there, give it a try, and see if you can't catch any fish.